Welcome to this 30th episode of SpaceX in the News. Today we have a lot to talk about. We're going to start off with Starhopper and the important and exciting things that are happening down there in Boca Chica, Texas with the big vehicle and its engine. Then we'll hop down the road to Starship and see what's going on with that big fella. Then we'll take a look at what's been going on with Starlink since SpaceX got the first 60 satellites into orbit. We'll take a peek at the ever-changing relationship between NASA and SpaceX and their Lunar 2024 mission. A little bit of new information has dropped about the Crew Dragon explosion, so we'll see what's going on with that. We're going to talk about the upcoming Falcon and heavy launch then we're going to finish this episode off with some channel updates and some exciting content that's coming your way this summer let's get started we some little jibos. Okay, so of course we're going to make our way down to Boca Chica, Texas and start with some information about Starhopper. Really exciting stuff, guys. So since its inception, this poor vehicle has been exposed to air saturated with salt water. And it may just happen to be that it's starting to take its toll on the skin of the vehicle. But all in all, it's no big deal. I'm sure that's something that can be remedied in the future. And regardless, Starhopper has been progressing with its preparation for its upcoming first untethered flight. The vehicle was seen venting nitrogen gas the other week for its ACS thrusters. And Raptor engine SN4 was at McGregor, Texas for test but it is now on site in Boca Chica and has been mounted to the rocket body. So at first we were all informed that this SN4 Raptor engine will be the engine to take Starhopper off the pad and at least up to an altitude of about 30 meters. But now rumor is starting to spread that SN4 will just be used for fit checks and SN5 will be the one to power the next single stage engine hop. The source being a writer from nasaspaceflight.com. It should also be noted that several sources on site are saying that SN4 is installed just off center. And this could speculate that maybe SN5 will be installed next to it and they'll use two engines for hopping. However, this contradicts Elon's tweet the other week that Starhopper will only have one engine for its upcoming flights. Now, originally, this first hop was supposed to take place at the end of May, but that didn't happen, and then it got pushed back to June 3rd, and now it's been pushed back again to June 11th, with two alternate dates in the following days. I think most of us in the community following Starhopper right now just assumed it would be pushed back. It's pretty normal to have this kind of thing happen, and that's okay with me, quite frankly. It gives me something to be really excited about. I mean, just take a look at this massive vehicle. Can you imagine this monster just hovering hundreds of meters in the air? We don't have to imagine it for much longer, because it's about to happen. It is going to be awesome. And I mean that in every literal sense of the word. But now let's move things down the road to Starship and see what's going on with that vehicle. Of course, SpaceX has two Starships now, MK1 in Boca Chica, Texas, and MK2 in West Coca, Florida. I haven't seen any new information regarding MK2 in Florida, so we're just going to take a look at MK1 here in Texas. There is a mystery structure being built right now next to Starship. Not sure what it is at the moment, but people are kind of speculating that it might be a crane to help lift the vehicle. If you think you have an educated guess, go ahead and leave it down in the comments. But as far as the ship itself, little aesthetic details are being worked out. Grinding work has been done on the outside of the ship to make it more streamlined. But really, it's the recent changes that's being made to the Starship itself and not the prototype that has everyone talking. Remember in our last episode, we talked about how Elon changed the number of Raptor engines on Starship from 7 to 6. Well, someone tweeted a rendering of what they thought that might look like, and Elon said, yeah, it's not bad. But then he followed up with another tweet that said the wings, flaps, and leg designs are changing again. Sigh. But claimed that it's not going to affect the schedule much, though. So Elon and SpaceX are changing the designs to Starship once again, which isn't really that surprising. They've done that plenty. We should learn more this summer once Elon does this year's Starship update conference like he does every year. One of the subjects he could focus on is the plan to make Starship a point-to-point -point transit system here on Earth. Now, this isn't a new thing. All of us have heard this before. However, it is reassuring because it's been a while since he talked about it. And quite frankly, I wasn't sure if he still planned on sticking with this project because he hasn't spoken about it for so long. Now, he didn't even mention it in his last conference, the one they held in Hawthorne, California, where they introduced Dear Moon. But SpaceX COO and President Gwen Shotwell was recently at MIT and spoke about this circuit plan and said it could happen within the next five years and that Starship could fly in the next 18 months. If that doesn't get you excited about the very near future, I really don't know what will. The stuff that's going to happen in the next couple years is incredible. Even if all this fails and nothing works out, it's still going to be fascinating to watch. I mean, on top of all the SpaceX launches we're going to get to see, whether it's Falcon 9s or Falcon Heavies, we also have Starlink that's already started going up, and we'll talk about here in a second. We got Starhopper that's about to start hovering over the Texas skies like a UFO. Two Starships are already under construction on opposite sides of the country, and they should be making their first orbital flights next year. Of course, we have Starship's trip to the moon with the Project Dear Moon, allegedly by 2023, point-to-point -point transit with Starship by 2025, and let's not forget what NASA's up to with their lunar project and SpaceX's involvement in that, and we will talk about that here more in a minute because it's changing all the time. 
And of course, there's SpaceX's plans for Mars. And last we heard, they were going to send cargo there on Starship in 2024, people in 2026. Again, aggressive goals, but hey, we'll just roll with that for now. And I know what a lot of you are thinking right now. This is never going to happen during these timelines that they're setting. And I would have to agree with you. They're very ambitious goals, but I can respect that. I consider it as a sign of a go-getter that wants to get things done. And with everything I just showed you, you have to admit that things are getting done. Right now, there are hands getting dirty as they build these space vehicles in an open field. Oh, and SpaceX is currently building a website for Starship as well. Yeah, I know it's not complete, but the one for Starlink is. And it is chock full of just interesting information that you need to take a look at. And in case you're not caught up or aware, Starlink is a constellation program that's targeted to offer service in northern U.S. and Canadian latitudes after six launches of about 60 satellites each, rapidly expanding into global coverage of the populated world after an expected 24 launches. SpaceX is targeting two to six Starlink launches by the end of this year alone. That's on their website. The first 60 SpaceX-owned Starlink satellites went up on a single launch just the other week, and apparently all of them are functioning so far. However, at Gwen Shotwell's MIT talk that I mentioned earlier, she said that 56 of the payloads are working well and four of them are misbehaving in some way, but are nevertheless in communication. Still, that's better than what Elon Musk said could happen according to his past tweets when he said that he expects several of them not to work at all. But now that they are up in space orbiting the Earth at a low altitude, people are starting to freak out about the light they're reflecting at night. Like if there's 12,000 of them, there's fear that they'll outnumber the stars visible to the naked eye. But Elon's trying to reassure the public that the sats will be in darkness when stars are visible and that the Starlink team last week was specifically looking into albedo reduction. Also saying that they'll get a better sense of value when the satellites have raised orbits and arrays are tracking the sun. There's been plenty of footage out there on the internet that shows these satellites and the light they reflect. And honestly, I think it looks really cool. But the thing to keep in mind is that these satellites will spread out over time. All of these satellites have Hall effect thrusters on them that will spread these satellites apart as they raise or lower their orbital altitudes. And the way that works is kind of like a racetrack. If you want to pass someone, what do you do? You go to the inside lane. If you want to go faster, you slow down. That way your orbit is closer to the Earth so you have that inside track. And if you use propellant to speed up your satellite, you're going to put yourself in a further out orbit, and that's the outside track. All right, so now let's move on to NASA's 2024 moon mission and how they no longer plan on using SpaceX rockets to make it happen. Now, last we visited the subject, NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine admitted that a Falcon rocket would have a key role to play in getting us back to the moon. But according to this article by Eric Mack, NASA has returned its focus to the SLS as a means to get us back to the moon. He quotes Bridenstine as saying, I want to be clear about SLS and Orion. SLS and Orion is the only system that gives us any chance of getting there in 2020. We looked at everything, we've considered everything in SLS and Orion, that is the system. And once it's developed, we will use it over and over and over again. So this is a complete 180 turnaround from like a month ago when Bridenstine said that they could use a Falcon rocket with an Orion capsule on top to get us back to the moon, but now he's saying, no, we're going to just use the SLS again. Okay. All right, now let's move on to Crew Dragon. The site where the Crew Dragon anomaly happened was at the landing zones at Cape Canaveral, Florida. And while we don't know exactly what happened yet, the area has been rendered safe, and NASA and SpaceX are still investigating what caused this explosion to occur. Really, the important information is what's at the bottom of the screenshot. The capsule previously intended for Demo 2 will now be used for the IFA, and the capsule intended for Crew 1 will now be used for Demo 2. So basically, that's all to say that the capsules that have been built for upcoming missions have all been bumped up one slot. And speaking of upcoming missions, Falcon Heavy's third launch is still scheduled for June 22nd. There will be 24 customer satellites to deploy for this mission, but the U.S. Air Force will be looking at this mission with both eyes open, which could pave the way for future reusability missions. All major pieces of this Falcon Heavy rocket are already on site near Pad 39A at Cape Canaveral, Florida. Oh, and one more thing, SpaceX is now worth more than Tesla. SpaceX is now privately valued at $33.3 billion to Tesla's 32.8. And, you know, shame on me because I always just assumed SpaceX was worth more than Tesla anyway. All right, so summer has officially started, so I just want to take a moment to walk you guys through some updates with the channel and some exciting information that you guys can look forward to getting into. So first and foremost, everyone can start expecting more cloud leaking content. Of course, I'm going to keep up with these SpaceX in the news episodes, but there's more SpaceX content I have planned out that I want to create for you guys as well. And finally, after years of planning and waiting and saving, I'm going to be adding powered paragliding content to this channel here in a couple weeks. And of course, those of you supporting this channel on Patreon will get you even more content, whether it's SpaceX or space in general, news, Lego, Kerbal, PPG content behind the scenes. So if you're not a cloud looking patron, consider doing it to support this channel. For as little as $1, you can get all this new content. And if you sign up today, there's already content for you to enjoy, plus all this content that's going to be coming your way. And I know there's a ton of you that wanted this channel to have a Discord. Well, guess what? We have one now. Everyone can join in there and share the things that you love, and you can also help me research for these SpaceX in the news episodes. I really do enjoy reading everyone's perspective and how the SpaceX news and information is affecting their lives. Well, that wraps up this episode. I hope you guys are pumped for the summer. I know I am. A lot of awesome things are going to happen, and we're going to cover it the whole way through right here on this channel. Thank you for watching. Godspeed.